Okay, welcome back. So in this section, we're going to take a look at our lead vocal tracks. We have two lead vocal tracks here in yellow, as you can see on the screen here. We have our lead vocal for the verse and our lead vocal for the chorus. Um, we're going to just loop the verse and we can uh, start with that. We're going to process these separately on separate tracks, unlike what we did with the background vocals. Uh, so let's start with our lead vocal track here. I'll mute our chorus track. And here's what we have so far. We'll check our tape machine levels our um, virtual console, the VCC, and then we'll go over to the channel strip. I'll do this all in one clean swoop because you've seen me do this now on every single track. I'm sure you guys get in the hang of it. So we're gonna try to dial this thing in to get it to sound uh, nice and even. We're gonna compress it on the channel strip. But again, we're gonna do very light compression because I'm gonna follow this up with another compressor, which we're gonna talk about uh, in a few minutes here. So here we go. As far as I can remember, Never made a single effort to make me not feel segregated. The fact of me being different is to you just another symptom. You can accept how I'm not what you expected. You can stand I smoke and drink, and that I'm not what you make me. As far as I can remember. Never made a single effort to make me not feel segregated. The fact of me being different is to you just another symptom. You can accept how I'm not what you expected. You can stand on smoke and drink, and that I'm not what you made me. As far as I can remember. You never made a single effort to make me not feel segregated. Being different is to you just another symptom. You can accept how I'm not what you expected. You can stand on smoke and drink, and that I'm not what you made me. As far as I can remember. Made a single effort to make me not feel segregated. The fact of me being different is to you just another symptom. You can accept how I'm not what you expected. You can stand on smoke and drink, and that I'm not what you made me. As far as I can remember. Never made a single effort to make me not feel segregated. The fact of me being different is to you just another symptom. You can accept how I'm not what you expected. You can stand on smoke and drink, and that I'm not what you made me. Okay, so here we go. So we're rolling off somewhere around 80 hertz. She doesn't have a lot of low rumble in her voice, so I don't want to get it, make it too, too thin. Um, and we'll, we'll, we may play with that a little bit later as well. Uh, and again, on the uh, compression settings, we're doing about 3 dB of compression. We're doing a 2 to 1 ratio. We're doing a slow attack, fairly quick release. Um, I used, again, the mic input as I've been using the whole time to get the coloring of the transformers. Um, as you can see on the EQ, I'm not doing anything because we're going to talk about that in a second. Um, and so that's kind of our start for this lead vocal. So we'll listen to a one more pass. As far as I can remember You never made a single effort To make me not feel segregated The fact of me being different Is to you just another symptom You can accept how I'm not what you expected You can stand on smoke and drink And that I'm not what you made me Okay, so now you can start to hear those background vocals kind of blending in with the lead vocals. So we'll adjust that of volume in a little bit. So again, as you saw, we did very little compression with no EQ. Okay, so now we're going to start to talk a little bit about, which we'll also talk about in, in, the, in the next section. Remember when we talked about earlier in the series when we were doing the demonstration part of the plugins and we talked about our analog, uh, virtual analog studio, where we said when we start talking about outboard gear, 
beyond the channel strip, beyond the console, where we said we're going to allow ourselves a few pieces of select gear that we can sprinkle around our mix. Okay, this is where this starts to come into play. So for this mix, we said we're going to have an one LA-2A we're going to allow ourselves. We're going to allow ourselves up to two 1176 compressors. We're going to allow ourselves a DBX-160 compressor. We're going to allow ourselves one Fairchild, and we're going to allow ourselves two LA-3A compressors okay because that's kind of a nice uh you know representation of what most analog studios would kind of have those things in there oh and we also um talked about allowing ourselves a Pultec uh e2 eq or two we'll say two Pultec eqs if we want to use those i'm going to write that down here so we're going to allow ourselves two Pultec eqs um and uh really that's really kind of it and maybe something from the slate collection if we decide to do that a little bit later so for our hardware eqs we're going to allow ourselves a couple of pull techs our hardware compressors la2a 1176s dbx fairchild and some la3as that's a pretty good representation now again the reason why we're doing that if you remember back in the earlier sections if you've been watching this series in order like i've urged you to <laughs> and you saw the demonstration part of all this we talked about how now that we have this extra hardware in a real analog studio, you had to kind of save and decide what tracks did you want to put those on? What tracks did you want to make stand out from the rest of our SSL mix or our SSL console? Here's the first example of where we're going to do that. So the lead vocal is obviously the most important vocal, our most important instrument in any mix, right? So we want to give our lead vocal a little bit of flavor, a little bit of vibe that's different from the rest of the mix from a, from a tonal perspective. So instead of using the EQ on the SSL, I'm going to use a Pultec EQ on my lead vocal. I'm also going to use, even though I used a little bit of compression on the SSL, I'm also going to use a Fairchild compressor on this lead vocal to give it a little bit of flavor. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to compress this with a Fairchild. So I'm going to come over to my Universal Audio plugins, and I'm going to look, uh, let's see, for my Fairchild uh, compressor. Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? One of the problems with having all these compressors is trying to find them. So we're going to go to the uh, mono version because this is a mono track. The Fairchild 660. And we took a look at this earlier in the series. I think we looked at the uh, Waves version as well. So this is by Universal Audio. Again, you can also pick up the Waves version called the Puig Child, the Jack Joseph Puig Collection. Excellent plugin. I'm going to use the Universal Audio one for this. Um, again, they come with some great presets, just like the Waves one. Um, you can either pick a preset and you can start there, or you can just do what I'm going to do, which is basically we're going to keep this thing on 100% wet, mix it 100%. Here's our output. We're going to compress a little bit. We're going to keep it on time constant one just to start again. This will just uh, will just dictate the um, the attack and release by you know by changing this. It it, it slightly changes the attack and release times. Um, and we're just going to push the input gain, and then we're going to use the threshold, and we're going to compress this kind of heavily. The great thing about the Fairchild and why it's one of the most sought after plugins, it likes to be hit a little bit harder. This is a tube based uh, hardware compressor. It really gives a nice, creamy, warm kind of a sound to this vocal. And even though you can slam it, it never really sounds compressed. It sounds natural. So keep your eye on the dB meter, and we're going to go ahead and we're going to dial this in. As far as I can remember, you never made a single effort to make me not feel segregated. The fact of me being different is the unit just another to harm you can accept how I'm not what you expected you can stand I smoke and drink and that I'm not what you may think as far as I can remember okay so listen to that word can remember the burr without the compressor listen to what that sounds like just so you can get a feel for what we're listening for far as I can remember. A burr. Listen for the B. Okay, now we're doing this in the context of the mix. I'm doing this on purpose in the context of the mix. See if you can pick out when I turn the compressor on how it softens that a little bit. As far as I can remember, you never made a single effort to make As far as I can remember. Okay, it softens it just a little bit. Also, the words before that, as far as, I can re as far as I can remember, okay, you can see it here. Again, and again, I know this is, uh, for, for my more advanced students here, this is, this is probably uh, repetitive, but again, 
if you're not used to listening for compression, okay, so right here, you can see the words, you can see the audio, how it's a little bit lower and she builds up to that. As far as I can remember. As far as I can remember. So the as far, we want to bring that up a little bit so we can hear it, right? We want to hear the word because it gets lost in the guitar. So with the compressor, listen to that. As far as I can remember. Before. As far as I can remember. You never. As far as I can remember. Okay, so it's more audible now. You can hear the words a little bit more. So we're also listening to even out that performance, but now also take notice as I'm toggling the compressor on and off. When I take away the compressor, it kind of sinks back in the mix. The compressor makes it stand up a little taller. Okay, so keep in mind, we're doing a couple of different things here with this compressor, but I just wanted to point that out to you. As far as I can remember, you never made a single effort to make me not feel Segregated Make me not feel Segregated The fact of me being different Is to you just another symptom huh? You can accept how I'm not what you expected You can stand out, smoke and drink And that I'm not what you may think Okay, so by compressing kind of heavily here, probably close to 10 dB of compression, and just giving us a little bit of output to kind of level match the plug-in, you can hear it doesn't sound compressed. It just, oops, sorry about that. It just sounds like it stands up a little taller and gets in your face, right? That's kind of what we want here. So again, I'll play this first passage here with no compression, and then I'll turn it on and you'll hear the difference. As far as I can remember Never made a single effort to make me not feel segregated. As far as I can remember, you never made a single effort to make me not feel segregated. Not bad. It evens out that performance pretty well. Now, again, in the end, we'll probably throw like vocal writer or something on there. So just make sure we get those last uh, words of the phrase to poke out a little bit more. But it took a, a vocal that is fairly, you know, somewhat dynamic. You can see it here, right? If I, if I increase, the, if I zoom up a little bit here, you can see where you're losing words here towards the end. You got words that are louder than others. That's common in a vocal. But this this compressor evens it out a lot more, and you, you, can, you can tend to hear the vocal lines a little bit more. The fact of me being different is to you just another symptom. You can accept how I'm not what you expected You can stand out, smoke and drink And that I'm not what you may think Okay, the other thing I'm hearing on this vocal now is I'm starting to hear a little bit of tss 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 and a little bit of sibilance. Now, if I go drop an EQ on this, like a Pultec, and try to give more air, or like the Mag EQ, we'll take the Mog or Mag EQ, where we'll get the air bands, we'll take a look at that as well. Um, we're going to get some sibilance, okay? So we got to be careful about that. So we may have to drop a DS on this, um, and we may do that right now, just to, just to see if we can get rid of some of that tss 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 after because now some of the um now that we're compressing you know we're bringing out some more some of that deessing so what i think i'm going to do is i'm going to throw a deesser on this and then try to follow it up with an eq to kind of dress it up a little bit so for our deesser we're going to use the fab filter pro ds which we haven't talked about throughout the series this is not necessarily an analog style plugin it's just a nice deesser and again, you can use any DSer, but I like this because you get a nice graphic display and it could be somewhat subtle and you don't have to make it, again, sound like it's DSed. Now, the other thing you could do is you could go in um, and manually DS, which maybe I'll show you how to do that in a second. But let's just see if we can dial this in and get rid of some of those the T's and the S's and kind of tame them. As far as I can remember, you never made a single effort to make me not feel segregated The fact of me being different is to you just another symptom huh? You can accept how I'm not what you expected You can stand out, smoke and drink and that I'm not what you may think As far as I can remember 
So you can see in the graphic display where it gets, where it highlights is where it's clamping down on the S's and you can see the gain reduction meter here. We're reducing that about almost eight dB. Every time the range will give us how much do we want to lower that S or that T or that sibilant. We're going eight, almost eight dB. And we're using the threshold to kind of dial in. Now the problem with the DS or if you try to heavily DS, a lot of times it starts to sound like it's DS. And then what happens is it takes all the air away from the vocal as well. So you got to be careful. And that's why a lot of times, if we don't have tons of S's and T's, I might go in and manually do it. You never made a single effort. Yeah. The fact of me being different is to you just another symptom. You can accept how I'm not what you expected. A little better. Not great. A little better. I'm not a big fan of DSing, DSers, plugins. I would rather manually do it. And I'll show you how I'll do that here, just so you can see it. And again, we'll solo up the lead vocal uh, to show you how to do this. So if I were to lead vocal bus and I were to solo this up, so that's all we're listening to. And let's just find one. As far as I can remember, you never made a single ever. Okay, now I have the de-esser on, so it's quieting this down a little bit. Let me bypass the de-esser, or shut it off, I should say. Uh, you never made a single ever. Single. Okay, if you were to zoom out on this audio, and you can see how the audio starts to break apart. The waveform, you get some gaps in here, right, like right here. But see this, like, solid block or I call it a football because it looks like a football that's the s of the t so what you can do is you can come in here and you can cut it and then you highlight it and you can manually take it down about 5 db is where I usually start and that will naturally get rid of that s you never made a single effort as opposed to you never made a single effort okay it sounds more natural it's more it's more subtle where a deesser clamps down and you got one setting on the deesser and it clamps in the setting will be the same for every S and every T. And that tends to sometimes get a little unnatural sounding, which is why I don't like it. As far as I can remember, you never made a single effort to make me not feel segregated. Even that segregated. You can see it when I blow apart the audio. That one's not so bad. And if I were to zoom in on this a little bit, you can see it's right here. Segregated. Right there. That's not too, too bad. Um, that one does, isn't nearly as offensive as the other ones. But again, this is prior to any, any EQ. And so when you start adding top end EQ, you're going to hear this even more. The fact of me being different is to you just the, the fact of me being. And we also can get rid of a lot of the lip smacks and stuff between the phrases, which we really didn't do in the in the beginning stages, which we probably should have, because there is some headphone bleed. If I zoom up on this audio all the way, you can see all the headphone bleed in here. So on the lead vocal, what we ought to do if we were good stewards of our engineering craft is we'd go in and we'd get rid of that stuff to give it a little, it's not really offensive, but you really should do that. The fact of me. And you hear that breath, that, <gasps> we want to try to dampen that down just a little bit. These are things we should have done in the editing stage, which we didn't do. Shame on David. The fact of me being different is to you just another symptom. You can accept how you just another symptom. Another symptom, I think, is what she might be saying here. So let's bring this back down so we could see it a little bit more easily. Another symptom. It's right here. You can see it's easily to pick these out because as you split apart the audio, the S or the sibilant part stays solid. And that's how you know where it is. Now this takes a little bit of time. And I'll usually do this, you know, when I'm not in a teaching mode here, before we even start mixing, I'll solo up the vocal track and go through it a little at a time. Now the symptom, you can but now I'm doing it here just as just to show you. Um, but I hear a T, a tss -tss 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 right there, offensive, right there. 
Okay, so what we should do, and again, you can easily just throw a de-esser on this to fix it, but again, I would rather do it this way because I feel like you get a more natural sounding vocal. Just another symptom, you can accept how I'm not what you expect, you can accept how you can accept. And accept how I'm not. And again, you only have to lower it a few dB. You don't have to do it very much. Depends on how offensive it is. This isn't terrible. Um, you can accept how I'm not what you expected. You get that, ch ch you know, a chew accepted. I mean, you know, it's really, it's not you. It's chew is what she's saying here. It's, you know, it's, it's a lot of words. How I'm not what you expect. Right. So again, being that it's the lead vocal you want to take the time to clean this up except how I'm not what you expect except how I'm not what you expect you expect I'm not what you expected. You can stand I smoke and drink, and that I'm not what you may think. Okay, so that's kind of where we're at. And then what I'll do is now that I cut this thing to death, I'm just going to bounce it down so it's one block of audio. Okay, so that makes it a lot less offensive, especially when we're going to bring in the whole band now and throw an EQ on this. And we're going to use the pull tech. And reason why we're going to use the pull tech is because, again, I want to give it a little bit of a standout sound, which is different from the rest of the tracks in the song, right? I'm going to go ahead and command B. Okay. As far as I can remember, you never made a single effort to make me not feel segregated. The fact of me being different is to you just another symptom. You can accept how I'm not what you expected. You can stand up, smoke and drink, and then I'm not what you may think. As far as I can remember, you never made a single effort to make me not feel segregated. Okay, now we're going to drop the pull tech EQ. I turned the de-esser back on just to kind of, you know, keep control it a little bit. I'm not going to spend the whole video cleaning up the lead vocal. You saw how I went in and manually de-essed it. You ought to do the same, if, or you can use a de-esser. And you ought to take out, as I'm going to probably during the break, all the headphone bleed between the phrases. Good thing to do. Okay, so I showed you how to do that. So now if we go over to our pull tech, and we're going to give it a little bit of EQ love here. We didn't use the EQ on the, um, on the channel strip, if you remember. So let's go over to our pull tech and let's get our EQ P1A here. Uh, we need the mono version of it. And here we go. We're going to throw it on after the de-esser. And we're going to try to give this a little air. So I'm going to try to go around maybe 12K and we're going to try to boost it up a little bit. Um, I demonstrated how to use this in the demonstration portion of this series. So I'm not going to walk through this plugin again. I'll go back and watch that if you forget how to use this. The fact of me being different is to you just another symptom. You can accept how I'm not what you expected. You can stand I smoke and drink, and that I'm not what you may think. As far as I can remember, you never made a single effort to make me not feel segregated. Okay, by boosting this at 12K, you can hear, and I'm boosting it quite a bit, about 5 dB. You can hear how it just opens up the top of her vocal a little. It gets it a little more air to stand on top, which is kind of what we want. Now, what I want to make sure we did on the, um, on the channel strip, did we use a low cut? Yes, we did. Okay, we did low cut it. Okay, I wanted to make sure of that, so we did. Okay, so now let's go back to the pull tech. Listen for the top end. Listen how you just get a little more air. Again, it's not real offensive, but listen to how we get a little more air. The fact of me being different is to you just another symptom. You can accept how I'm not what you expected. 
Again, so what's great about the Pultec, again, it's a tube-based EQ, and so it sounds smooth on the top end. When you do a lot of high-end boosting or trying to put a little air in on a stock plug-in, it sounds very harsh. Now, you got to balance between not being over sibilant because, again, you could bring some sibilance and you got to be careful. That's why you want to go through your whole track, clean up all those S's, either manual or DS it before you start boosting a lot of high end. We've only done this here a little bit as a demonstration. You would do it through the whole track, right? So, once again, before I'll turn it, I'll start with it before and then I'll just click on the EQ and you can hear the vocal kind of stand out. As far as I can remember. You never made a single effort to make me not feel segregated. Okay, so hopefully you can hear that here. Now, another alternative to the Pultec. I love the Pultec, but here's another EQ by Universal Audio, and they also make um, they also make a um, a native version of this, not Universal Audio. I believe uh, who does? Is it? Uh, I don't think it's Waves. It's um, Maybe Plugin Alliance makes the Mog EQ. Again, we said we would allow ourselves that in our studio. A couple of pull techs. Here's just another option. Here is the Mog UAD version of it. And this is famous in its hardware version for the air band. This is great on vocals. You see the air band here? So again, we're going to have, um, and again, there's lots of cool presets here, you know, female vocals and stuff. But if we just wanted to give this a little bit of air, you can see it goes up uh, to 40 uh, kilohertz, which is above what we really can hear, but we can go way up around 20 and then we use this red air gain knob to kind of give us some air. Let's, let's see what that does for us. As far as I can remember, you never made a single effort to make me not feel segregated. The fact of me being different is to you just another you can accept how I'm not what you expected. Okay, so we want to be careful here. You see the peak that we don't peak and clip too much, but you can hear 40, 40, uh, 40 kilohertz. Get about 6 dB, and I'm just going to bypass it on and off. And listen now, it gives a little more air. Again, it's 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 called the air band for a reason. It's just to give it a little more top end and not be so uh, dark sounding. As far as I can remember. You never made a single effort to make me not feel segregated. The fact of me being different is to you just another symptom. You can accept how I'm not what you expected. You can stand a smoke and drink and then I'm made a single effort to make me not feel segregated the fact of me being different is to you just another symptom you can accept how i'm not what you expected okay so there's the mog eq again really nice at 40 kilohertz you just give it a little more air now you could even combine the two you can have the pull tech kind of doing, you know, from maybe 12K. Remember, this only goes up to 16K, and, this is the, and you don't have to boost it as much. And let's just see what that does, okay? Let's just see what that does. As far as I can remember, you never made a single effort to make me not feel segregated. The fact of me being different is to you just another symptom. You can accept how I'm not what you expected. You can stand a smoke and drink, and that I'm not what you may think. Okay, so it's subtle, but now if we were to take both of these EQs away, as a matter of fact, I'll put them both on the screen, I'll put them in bypass mode. So we're going to the pull tech. Now over to the, after that, we're going to the, uh, the Magi. Ah, should have pinned it. Sorry about that. Got to pin these things, right? Okay. So we're going to pin this one. And then we're going to bring in the Magi Q. There we go. Why am I only getting one? How come I'm not getting both? I should be getting both. Why am I not getting both? I should get both. Um, Okay, there we go. Huh, I don't know what happened there. Okay, my fault. Okay, so we're going from the pull tech 
into the MOG. We're going to start with the bypass and bring them in. Again, we're listening for the air, the top end of the vocal to kind of cut through a little bit more, and then we'll be able to drop it a little bit more in the mix and get it to sit a little bit nicer. And again, this is something you've got to experiment with. Um, I'm just showing you some different concepts and techniques and how you can use these plugins. But again, the moral of all this is we're putting some EQ and we're giving this a different tonal characteristic to everything else in the mix, which is really just running through the SSL. That's, that's the takeaway from all of this. As far as I can remember, you never made a single effort to make me not feel segregated. The fact of me being different is to you just another symptom. You can accept how I'm not what you expected. You can stand I smoke and drink, and that I'm not what you made. Okay, so it really does give it uh, that little bit of a boost, but it doesn't really get heavily in the sibilant. One, because we fixed some of those S's. I do have the de on, so keep that in mind. But really what we're doing is we're, we're doubling it up here. Again, I would usually probably just use one or the other, but I wanted to show you both these EQs. So now this lead vocal can be tucked a little bit more in the mix from a volume perspective. As far as I can remember Never made a single effort to make me not feel segregated. The fact of me being different is to you just another symptom. You can accept how I'm not what you expected. And again, this would use would could use some automation. You know, again, it's not going to sit perfect. We're going to have to ride the vocal or use something like Vocal Rider because again, the vocal is a dynamic. And even though the compressors are helping, but it's not going to fix it all. And again, we want to get rid of. I can hear the lip smacks here. So again, we would go through and we would go through between the the phrases here, and then just make sure that you always do a fade out and a fade in, so you don't have any clicks and pops. Right. And that's going to help clean up this lead vocal sound, because, again, even when you get between the two verses here, let's see if there's any headphone bleed. Um, no, not really, because that was cut separately. So that's OK. So we don't have to really worry about that so much, um, although you could. You know, you could always go through um, and do this kind of a thing. OK, so that's something that you're going to do on your end for your part of the mix. You're going to go through and clean up and do all those sorts of things and get and get the vocal sitting um, nice in the mix. But that's that's how you can use the uh, the two EQs there. OK, so now that we got kind of the lead vocal dialed in, let's look at the chorus. OK, because now we just did the verse. Now we're going to have the same thing going on on the chorus of this. OK, we're, the chorus is going to is on a separate track, which is totally fine. Um, we're going to process it a lot of the same way because it is the same. You know, it's just the, it's the chorus. It's not like it's a whole different singer. It's the same singer just singing the chorus section. So we want to try to make sure that we're hitting our plugins and using pretty much the same settings on the um, on the channel strip. So that's the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to copy the settings from the first vocal track, which is the verse, to the second vocal track here as a starting point. Okay, so now let's listen to, we'll listen to it in isolation, I suppose, the first time around just so you can hear the chorus by itself. Okay, so here we go. I don't know how this will be What you get is what you'll see See No dress blowing in the wind That's your dream, but that's not me. I don't know how this will be. What you get is what you'll see. No dress blowing in the wind. Okay, so I'm using a lot of the same settings, but I'm compressing a little bit heavier on the um on the channel strip only because this vocal is going to be more dynamic it's the chorus you can hear it's going to be more dynamic especially the first part of the phrases so again we're going to follow it up with the pull tech um again and we're going to follow it up uh me or yeah the pull um, excuse me the fair child we're going to follow it up with again just to keep it consistent okay and that's your dream but that's not me i don't 
Okay, so yeah, now we're using two instances of the Fairchild where we said we only allow ourselves one. But keep in mind that we also have the lead vocal on two separate tracks where in a performance it will typically be on one track. Sometimes engineers will record just like they did here. The verse and the chorus um, is separate. And then what you could do in an analog studio is you would process your Fairchild and your EQs and you'd print it back into the DAW and then use those hardware EQs and compressors again for the second part, which is the, the chorus. We're getting a little bit ahead of ourselves. So it's not it's not cheating if you're going to use the second version of the Fairchild on the chorus. What I'm trying to say is, I should have said this easier, is that um, I want the verse and the chorus to have the same tonal characteristics because it's the lead vocal, okay? Um, so that's why I'm using the Fairchild twice. You don't have to do that, but you can. Again, we're, we're only putting the Fairchild on the vocals. We're not going to use it anywhere else in the mix, and that's the lesson here. I don't know how this will be what you get is what you see no dress blowing in the wind that's your dream but that's not me I okay so there there's our fair child and our ssl a little bit heavier on compression now again, let's drop the pull text on here again. Same thing, just for the same exact reason. Because <clears throat> we want the two vocal tracks to sound similar tonally. I don't know how this will be. What you get is what you see. No dress blowing in the wind. That's your dream, but that's not me. So we will shut, we will do the same thing we did before. We'll start with both the EQs off. Well, we'll start them in bypass mode and I'll turn them on. And you can hear how it adds that little bit of air. I don't know how this will be. What you get is what you see. Opens that vocal right up using the pull tech first. Again, 12K, about three and a half dB of a boost. And then on the air band on the Mog EQ, 40K and about four or five, about five dB. Okay, that's what we're gonna get. Now again, that's in solo mode. Let's bring back the rest of our bands and let's hear what we got going on here. Let's bring our whole band in at this point. See what we got going on. We'll go from the first verse into that first chorus, just so we can hear what we're doing here vocally and try to just, you know, get a quick balance. As far as I can remember, you never made a single effort to make me not feel segregated. The fact of me being different is to you just another symptom. You can accept how I'm not what you expected. You can stand, I smoke and drink, and that I'm not what you may think. Okay, so I realize the vocals sound a little dry and they sound a little a little narrow because we haven't used any reverb and delay yet. That's for another section. But now we got, <clears throat> excuse me, we got our vocals, our lead vocals kind of balanced with our background vocals. Again, I would be using, in the end of the mix, we'll be throwing vocal rider on there to kind of ride it to get it a little more balanced. Um, or you would use automation to automate it. But you can see how we're now using some of our other plugins, our other external hardware, and we're going to start sprinkling them around the mix. Okay, so we've done this only on the lead vocal to this point. Come back for the next section, and we're going to talk about maybe where we can add those plugins on a couple of the other tracks to kind of, again, to spice them up a little bit and to have them stand out. So that'll be in the next section. Come on back. <laughs> 